Hi everyone, I'm Coach Abay. I talk about tech, techniques, skills, and software. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use all the data in a folder. We can use it to make a file, a table, and the table that is later on, we can summarize it to something like this, where all the data is in a chart or in a pivot chart. All of this we're going to do without ever pressing Ctrl-C and Ctrl-V or copying and pasting manually. If you want to learn that, keep on watching this video. First, let's start with our raw data. Now, if you want access to the files that I used to use so you can practice and you can use it in this video, there is a link in the description box of our Google Drive and there I will put the files in there. So, I pulled up a sample data. So, we have here the columns, region, settlements, and then quarters. Let's assume that this is sales. So, we have a sales report for the tier. So, we have regions and settlements. So, it's obvious that we have a lot of Pokemon. So, that's what we use in the data sample. And this type of table is also appeared in other files. So, per year, we have a format that we use for all. Disclaimer. If your data hindi consistent yung pagkaka format, then it might be harder to clean that up and combine. So mas maganda kung make sure natin na consistent yung ating data, raw data before we attempt or before we try to learn yung ating importing through Power Query. To get started, nagcreate lang tayo na blank worksheet. Eto yung ating na sa left side ng screen. So wala pa siyang laman right now. Meron lang tayo ng empty space. All we need to do is go to data tab and then get data. And then meron drop down ng from file and select natin yung from folder. From here, you could search ko ano yung folder na pinalalagyan ng iyong mga raw files. In our case, eto yung ating sales folder. So if I double click that, you can see hindi nag-appear yung files kasi nga naka-filter siya to show only the folders. So huwag kayong mag-panic kung walang files na nag-appear dito. Kasi basically ang ginagawa yan is nagdi-drill down siya into one specific folder. So now that we have yung sales folder natin as yung ating source, click natin yung open. So now we have a list of the files that we have sa folder na yun. And if I pull up yung ating source folder, totoo nga na may anib na files here. Each for the year mula 2015 hanggang 2020. Now, here we have button sa baba. Ang gagawin natin is combine and transform. Because what we'll do is instead of just loading all of these separately, i-combine natin siya into one table. When I click that, it will open another pop-up box. Dito sa ating combine files na pop-up, we can select kung ano yung kukunin nating data dun sa files na yun. So, Excel will predict kung paano nat, paano or aling data ang ipupul niya depending on what you select here. So, dito sa taas, mayroong sample file na kalagay dyan. So, you could select yung first file by default or yung specific na file na panggagalingan ng iyong sample data. Depende yan sa'yo. Then, you can select dito sa ating um, parameter kung alin yung basis niya. If hindi naka-table format yung iyong data, walang mag appear na ganitong icon kasi this is a table icon. Ang mag appear lang is itong mga ganito. This, these are the sheets. So, this can also work kung kunyari marami kayong files pero iba-ibang sheets yun laman. You can select kung ano yung sheets lang na pagkukunan mo ng data. So, I can just select either the table or the sheet itself. It will ignore all of the blank na rows. Okay? So, ang kukunin ko naman, since lahat ng um, sample data ko ay consistent, di meron siyang table there, I'll just select the table. And then, I'll click OK. Meron na mag-appear na ating Power Query Editor. So, ito na yung staging location natin. Dito natin siya imo-modify kung paano natin siya gusto ma-import or mag-appear sa ating um, Excel file. Now, by default, meron siyang first column kung saan nakalagay yung source name. But you can see na all the, all the rest ay same nung nasa mga tables ng ating raw files. Now, gusto ko, syempre pag kinombine ko siya, magkakaroon ako ng sales per settlement, per region, per year, per quarter. Um, and ang determinant ko or ang way ko para masabi ko nung year yon would be based on the source name, right? Kasi nga, per year yung ating source files. To make it easier for me, what I can do here is 
to add another column. So I'll just go to the Add Column tab and then create a custom column. Gagawin ko to para pag gumawa ako ng pivot table, maintindihan ng Excel na isang column na yon, which is here, ay maging basis niya for summarization ng data mo further. So sa new column name, ito yung name ng column na inad ko. So ilalagay ko dito, year. Kasi yun nga yung year natin. Then I will modify yung ating text. So lagay niyo lang yung text middle or kahit type niyo yung mid, may lalabas ng mga um, options here. Different kasi yung Power Query formulas to sa nakasanayan natin na Excel formulas. Kasi kung sa Excel formula, it type equals mid, di ba? Dito, equals text.middle. Pero, basically, same lang din siya ng syntax. In this case. So, yung first is, select natin kung saan galing yung ating data. So, in, our, in this case, kailangan ng galing siya dito sa ating source name. Ito yung source name na uh, column. Then, kung pang ilang character siya. Lalagay ko dyan 13 kasi meron tayong S-A-L-E-S-R-E-P-O-R T underscore. Tapos, yun ating um, year ay start na. So, 13 siya. Doon siya start And yung ating number of characters. So, apat yun. So, apat yung characters kasi year. So, 2015. And then, I'll close parentheses. So, meron na siyang indicator sa baba. Sabi niya, no syntax errors have been detected. Ibig sabihin, uh, nag-work ng tama or at least walang error yung ating inputed na um, custom formula here. So, if I click OK, you can see na meron ng inad na column. By default, it appears to sa rightmost part ng table at meron na tayong year over here. Now, kainaman dito is you can remove yung ating source name kasi hindi natin siya kailangan dahil meron na tayong nilagay na um, basis dito sa year na to. If you later on add more files, it's okay. Maintindihan na ng Excel to drop the same columns and modify kung ano yung corresponding na columns. So, we'll demonstrate that later on. Ngayon, that we have our year over here. If I choose to move it to the leftmost, Ayan, kasi ayoko na doon siya kasama ng mga um, figures natin or number figures natin. I can do that. So, click and drag lang. Furthermore, if I want naman to add um, yung total sales for the year, I'll just select yung columns na gusto ko i-add. And sa add column, I'll just go to standard. Click add. Ayan, meron ditong column. By default, ang name niya is addition. To rename the header, I can double click lang and then change ko siya into total. Ayan. So, meron na tayong total na column. And if I go to home, close and load, you can see na marirender niya na yung ating table. Ito yung sales table natin. It created a new sheet. Ayan. Yung sales natin na sheet. And naka-table name niya siya na sales. So, yan yung ating data from all the different files within that same folder. Now, bakit mas preferred ko to na way of doing things? Una sa lahat is um, hindi ka nagko-control si control di manually. So, less keystrokes, less errors. Another thing is, usually kapag marami na masyado yung data, kapag nag-manual ka na control, uh, control si control v di ba minsan nag-hang? Um, minsan naman may nalilive out tayo. Um, hindi siya... Uh, maganda per se, or hindi siya kasing efficient ng gagamit tayo ng Power Query. Another thing is, if we add more files, or if we modify yung source file, then, it also works well. Um, to demonstrate, mag add ako ng isa pang file. So, I just created a duplicate na Sales Report 2021. Wala siya sa previous folder natin. But if I go here sa ating um, table and I refresh my data, you will see na meron na agad na 2021 na data here. Nag-appear na agad yung ating 2021 na data kasi nandun siya sa same folder na yun. Wala nang additional na steps for me to um, manually again open and change that up. So, nandiyan na siya agad-agad. Another thing na mas 
maganda pa dito is dahil nga reactive siya, if I do make changes to my data, for example, pupuntahan ko yung sales report 2021 and for example, wala tayong sales for 2021. Zero siya. If I save this file and I refresh my table, you can see when I scroll down sa 2021 data, naka-zero na rin siya. Ibig sabihin, every time you refresh, it pulls out yung mga pinaka-recent na data natin. So, just imagine ko paano siya mag apply when you are working on a file na shared file ng maraming tao or nasa network file siya. Mas madali and uh, mas accurate yung data na mapupul mo every time you try to refresh your file. So, i-delete muna natin itong sales report 2021 kasi wala siyang lamang figures. And if I refresh again, yung ating file, you can see na hanggang 2020 na lang yung data na nandito. So, it's really, really great. So, now that we have yung ating source data laid out like this, I can proceed with transforming this into have into a pivot uh, table or something with a pivot chart even. So, I'll go to insert, click pivot table, it selects the whole table range natin na sales. Click OK. So, nasa bago siyang worksheet. Here, ibibuild na natin siya. So, lalagay ko yung uh, year bilang columns. Ilagay natin yung region bilang rows. And we have our total sa ating values. So, now that we have that, meron na tayong total sales per region natin. Change up lang natin yung ating number format para mag-appear siya in a better way. Gawin natin siyang, lagyan natin siya ng decimal places and a symbol. Click OK. So, yan. In peso form na siya. Okay? Now that we have this, lagyan lang natin ng counting spacing para mas nadali makita at nakaka-center yung ating um, pivot uh, table. Pwede na tayo mag-add ng ating chart. So, pivot table, table analyze. Click lang natin pivot chart. Uh, for this one, gagamitan ko siya na stacked column. Kasi nga, gusto ko na ma-present yung isang column lang per region. And then, nag-stack up siya per year. So, if I click OK, you can see yung ating chart. Um, para lang mas madaling tingnan or easier on the eyes, click lang natin yung view. Ayokong makita yung ating grid lines. Yan. Para mas, mas nakafocus lang yung ating paningin dito sa ating data. Then, um, I can play with maybe the colors. So, to change that up, puto lang tayo sa... Click lang natin muna yung pivot table design. So, kung gusto ko, medyo nasa gray and black yung tone yan. Pwedeng ganyan. And then, I'll click my um, chart as well. Here, I can also format. So, for example, gusto ko rin siya lagyan ng konting contrast like that. Para medyo magkasundo sila. And to improve it further, one thing we already discussed a previous video. Hindi ko na masyadong didetalyehin. Lagay ko na lang your link dyan. At sa description box, yung pag-insert natin ng slicer. So, I'll go to my um, pivot table and I'll insert a slicer for year and for the region. Ayan. So, meron na tayong slicer for region and slicer for year. Tapos, partan ko lang yung kulay niya sa slicer tab. Ayan. Para uniform silang lahat. So, we already have a neat presentation ng ating data na nag-start sa isang folder na may multiple files. Here, we can select yung region lang. We can select yung performance niya per year. And it's very dynamic and creative as well. So, yan yung ating discussion for today. Let me know sa comment section if you have any questions. I hope you learned something new and good luck sa pag-flex dito sa inyong boss at sa inyong mga ka-teammates. Sana may natutunan kayo. I'll see you in my next video. Hit like kung, kung nag-enjoy kayo sa video. You can subscribe. And hit the notification bell para sa mga susunod pa nating usapan about tech, techniques, skills, and software. Again, I'm Coach Abby. Salamat sa pakikinig. Ingat palagi. Stay safe. Be better today than you were yesterday. Have a great day.